On the 24th of September 1943, three weeks after the first Allied landings in Italy, the British troops of the 1st Battalion, the Royal Fusiliers of the 8th Indian Division, commenced disembarkation at Taranto. For two months, the battalion, alongside the rest of the division, advanced north up the eastern coast of Italy as part of the British 8th Army, eventually reaching the small town of Paglietta on the banks of the River Sangro on the 19th of November. Here, the battalion would remain for just over a week until it received orders in the evening of the 27th of November to cross the River Sangro and attack the village of Santa Maria. Santa Maria sits on a ridge line that dominates the Sangro, and alongside its neighbour, Mosogrogna, it formed a key part to the German defences in the region. For the attack, the first Royal Fusiliers were initially to be held in reserve whilst the 1st Battalion, the 5th Royal Gurkha Rifles, moved on and secured Mosogrogna. Once the Gurkhas had their objective, the Fusiliers would then pass on through and assault Santa Maria. The attack got underway at 2300 on the 27th of November 1943, with an artillery barrage covering the Gurkhas advance towards Mosogrogna. By early morning on the 28th of November, the Gurkhas had fought their way into the eastern end of the town, but increasingly determined German resistance eventually stalled the battalion's attack. This subsequently led to a change of plan, and at 0300 that morning, B and C companies of the 1st Royal Fusiliers were ordered to move up with all possible speed and reinforce the Gurkhas. Setting off up the hill slopes in heavy rain, the British infantry, after overcoming several German positions on the approaches to the town, made their way into the eastern end of Mosogrogna, from where contact was established with the Gurkhas at 0500. Immediately, the Fusiliers found the situation in the town chaotic, as gunfire and smoke raged throughout, and the British and Gurkhas were forced into fighting for every inch of ground as a history of the 8th Indian Division records. Germans appeared everywhere. Every alley or upper window held a sniper or machine gunner. After the Gurkhas had passed through an area, other Germans reoccupied strong points and weapon pits, and the battle resolved itself into a vicious and confused hurly-burly in which small groups hunted each other to the death. After intense house-to-house -house fighting, the British and Gurkhas had a firm foothold on the eastern end of Mosogrogna, and it was as these troops were taking up defensive positions around the town square that suddenly, through the noise of battle, the distinctive sound of tank tracks could be heard to the west. These tanks belonged to the German 26 Panzer Regiment and consisted of five Panzer IVs, six Stugs, and, more significantly, five Panzer III's equipped with flamethrowers, the latter of which had not been used in combat before in the Italian theatre. The concentration of such a large and powerful armoured force was, according to German reports, simply to retake the eastern end of Mosogrogna, with one such report stating that Attack at 0500 toward Mosogrogna with the objective of throwing the enemy out of the town and restoring the main battle line. The town is to be retaken while it is still dark before enemy air force activity begins. To avoid losses, the tanks are to be pulled back under cover of darkness to the ravine by Mosogrogna. Just after 0600 on the 28th of November 1943, the first German tanks broke through into the town square. At the front was a flame-throwing Panzer III, followed up by a Panzer IV. Immediately, heavy fighting broke out in the town square, with some of the fusiliers running out from cover and attaching sticky bombs to the side of the tanks, although no reports indicate that any of these detonated. Meanwhile, Lance Sergeant James Reynolds of C Company, the 1st Royal Fusiliers, 
displayed heroic actions for which he would be recognised with a military medal, the British Army's third highest decoration. His citation details that German tanks were firing through the buildings with guns and also using flamethrowers. Lance Sergeant Reynolds organised a hauling up under fire of a Piat and bombs with a length of signal cable to a first floor window. Once in position at the window, another fusilier brought the Piat into action and, with his first shot, succeeded in knocking out the lead flamethrowing Panzer III. Seconds later, Major Peter Warner, C Company's commanding officer, shot dead all three of the tank's crewmen as they attempted to bail out from the burning tank. It was at around this time that British artillery began hitting Mosogrogna once again, with the intention of breaking up the German counterattack. From their positions on the opposite bank of the Sangro, the artillery laid down a heavy and sustained bombardment with some of the rounds falling dangerously close to the Gurkha and British positions. In spite of this, the bombardment had its desired effect when one of the artillery rounds knocked out a second flame-throwing Panzer III and compelled the German tanks to disengage from the town square. However, although the situation in the town had been somewhat stabilised, developments along the River Sangro meant no British tanks could get forward to reinforce the Gurkhas or Fusiliers, as a history of the 8th Indian Division explains. Halfway between the Sangro and the ridge, a giant crater blocked the road. On either side, the ground was stiff with mines, and every diversion fraught with mortal risk. Enemy tanks and self-propelled guns could enter Mozogrogna freely from the north, whereas the tracks forward from the Sangro were blocked. No diminution of enemy strength and will to resist could be discerned, and as the forenoon passed, it became evident that if the Germans struck in strength, they could regain Mosogrogna. Accordingly, at 0715 on the 28th of November, with armoured reinforcements unable to get forward, the Gurkhas and Fusiliers were ordered to withdraw from Mosogrogna and reorganise on the banks of the Sangro, prior to a new attack being launched later that day. Consequently, covered by the Fusiliers, the 1-5th Royal Gurkha Rifles commenced withdrawing from the town, and at 0800, B and C Companies, the 1st Royal Fusiliers, likewise conformed with the order. In total, the Gurkhas and the Fusiliers had suffered over 200 casualties, with the former sustaining 37 men killed in action, and the latter 32. Among the 32 men of the 1st Battalion, the Royal Fusiliers, who lost their lives in the fighting at Mosogrogna, was 29-year-old Warrant Officer Class 2 Robert Jellyman, my great-great-uncle. Born in 1914 in Middlesex, England, Warrant Officer Class 2 Robert Jellyman had been with the 1st Royal Fusiliers since the start of the war, and before deploying to Italy, he had served extensively in North Africa and the Middle East. Today, he, alongside the other 31 fusiliers, are laid peacefully to rest in the Sangro River War Cemetery, looking out across their former battlefield.